you know html css but still find it difficult to make a complete web page if so then you are on the right video hello everyone and welcome to modern web my name is kunal and in this today's video i will show you how you can use your knowledge of css and javascript to make this digital marketing web page from scratch today you will not only make this web page modern looking like you can see these elements these are not images but instead an actual element of html you will also learn how to make this website responsive for all devices which is a must we will see how we use inspector window to make web pages responsive and a cherry on top we will add these little animations on scroll using a library called animate on scroll so i hope you guys are excited to make this project so to start click on the like button below this video and open your code editors to follow by the way in the description you can find the timestamp for this video and also the source code in the description you will find a github repo link click on that to open this page and here make sure you fork it and give it a start then you can download the zip in order to start with this tutorial but if you use github cli just copy this https link and in your terminal run git clone and the link of the repo and this command will install or just clone the repository and you will find a folder which contains images and you will find the javascript index and style.css file as well so once you have the starter files we can start writing code so open the index page and let's first import the google fonts that we need in this project it's good to add comments in your project it will make your code more uh, readable so open a new tab and search for google font open the first link this is the official link and once the page is open click on search fonts and search for lex and this is the font that we are going to use in this project you can use any other font if you like so we only need its three font style which is the 300 weight the 400 and a medium 500 so i will select those three you can see them right here and now scroll down and you will find this link tag click on the copy icon and paste those link in the index file so these will import the google fonts now scroll down again and copy this css font family property that we will add in our body to apply the default font family of our html so go to style.css file and here select the body and paste that font family so this will set the default font family to lexan and now we are good to go so let's make our nav part so first of all make a header and this header tag will contain the nav part as well as the hero section create a nav tag and give it a class nav part so that we can access it in the css now if i check out my design in the nav bar i have a logo as well as these four links so to create logos we will of course going to use image tag so use image tag and in the source give the image path which is the logo inside the image folder and also give the class logo so that we can style it in the css you can also give alt attribute if you want and now let's create the nav links so these four links will be an unordered list so make an ul and give the class links container this will contain all those four links and since it's an unordered list make a list item and give it a class link item and make an anchor tag to make the links clickable for now set href to hashtag because we don't have any link and give it a class link so of course we can select it in the css copy the text and paste it right here by the way in the description you can find the figma design file so you don't have to write these text manually you can just copy and paste all the dummy text So once done with these links, let's check the web page. And this is how it looks. It is looking bigger because I have a 100, more than 100% scale. So in the 100% scale, this will look like this. 
now let's style that so first of all inside the body let's set the default color value to this variable which is primary color well this primary text color is basically the black color for now but by using variable you can change all the default color in just one click and set default font weight to 300 now let's make a nav bar also if you like do make sure you comment in the code to make it more readable so first of all set its position to fixed and give it stop to zero and left to zero so it will always stay on top irrespective of scroll now give its set index to nine to make it above all the elements and give it a width and a height of five rem notice i'm using rem values here instead of pixels to make it more responsive and give it a padding of 10 vw from left and right now to make logo and the links side by side instead of coming down each other you can use display flex and to make space between them set its justify content to space between and give align item center to make it vertically center and you can see these are coming side by side and have space between them so now let's select the logo and make it little bit smaller so set its height to let's say 1.5 rem and this is how it looks now let's style the links so select the links container and again give its display to flex in order to make the links side by side use gap property to add gapping between them and if you want to remove these black bullets we just have to use list style none and this will remove the bullet point now let's select the links class to style the anchor tag so in the design our links look something like this let's try to create it so first of all give it a padding of let's say 0.5 ram from top and bottom and 1.5 ram from left and right now give it text decoration none to remove the underline and set its text transform to capitalize to make first letter capital and set its color to variable primary text color which is a black color and we are done with the links now let's give a background color to this nav bar also so add a background property and use a variable function to access accent color variable and our nav bar is done so now let's move on to our hero section and let's create the hero section so so after this nav tag add a comment and let's say it main section and then use main tag to create the hero section give it a id instead of class and uh, let's say it hero section and now just copy this id and paste it in the home link in the href after this hashtag so what it will do whenever you click on the home link it will take you to this hero section id element which means it will take you to this main section and this is how you navigate within the page so in the hero section we have two things this info and this image container so let's create this hero info section first so create a div and give it a class hero info you can give any class name you want just make sure it makes sense so inside this hero info first of all make the h1 and give it a class hero heading and again copy the text and paste it inside the code after the heading we have a paragraph in the design so make a paragraph and also give it a class maybe hero paragraph or something like that and just copy and paste this dummy text and then we have two action buttons in our design so we will wrap those two buttons inside one container
सो मेक अ डेव एंड गिव अ क्लास हीरो एक्शन बटन्स एंड इंस्टेड ऑफ यूजिंग एन एक्चुअल बटन टैग वी विल गोइंग टू यूज एंकर टैग सो दैट ऑन क्लिक वी कैन फ्री डायरेक्ट यूज विद इन द पेज सो वी हैव सेम बटन्स बट वी हैव डिफरेंट स्टाइल्स सो वी विल यूज बी टी एन क्लास एज अ प्राइमरी क्लास एंड देन वी विल यूज प्राइमरी बी टी एन क्लास एज अ क्लास टू गिव कलर्स टू द बटन सो सिंस द सेकेंड बटन इज ऑफ डिफरेंट कलर वी विल गिव a secondary btn class instead of primary btn and just copy and paste the button text from the design now if you check the page you can't see anything because all of the heading and para are below the nav bar so if i remove it you can see them now so let's style them to make look more like the design so add a comment hero section inside css file and now select the hero section container which is the main tag using its id and first of all set its position to relative and then give it a width of 100% and say its minimum height to 100 vh so it will at least be of 100 vh height and set its background to variable lighter x in color and give it a padding of 10 vw from left and right now since we want the hero info and the image container side by side we have to use the flex box here so give display flex to make the image container and the info side by side and set its justify content to space between to add space between them and set its align item to center and that will align the elements in vertical axis so this is how it looks so now let's select the hero info to make its width little bit smaller so select it using its class name and first of all set its position to relative don't give it absolute give it relative i have made a mistake here and then set its width to 50% along with the minimum width of 350 pixels well i will fix this position absolute value in later in this video now let's select the hero heading and give it a font size of 3.75 gram and also set its font weight to 400 to make it little bit bold and use line height property to make spacing between the lines which is 5.5 gram by the way and in the design you can see this potential word is in different color so to make that we have to make this potential word inside a span tag and and this span tag after the word now we just have to select this tag in the css to make it of different color so select hero heading and then span tag and inside it you can just say color variable function and the name of the color which is the primary color and this is how it's done so now let's select the hero paragraph to make it more clean so use dot to access the hero paragraph class and set its line height to 2 frame to make gapping between the line and and give it a margin of 2 rem from top and 4 rem from bottom and we don't need to do any thing else with this paragraph and now select the button class to style the buttons so i'm going to use this button class as a general class to give stylings and then the primary button as a specific class for the background or colors so first of all give a text decoration not to remove the underline from the text and then give its padding to 1 rem and 2 rem from left and right looks good and for now just give it a background of black so that we can view it and give it a margin right to add spacing between those two buttons great and set its border radius to 2 rem to create that round edges 
and set its text transform to capitalize to make first letter capital. Great. Now select the primary BTN class, which is the specific class where we will give the background color or text color. So select that and first of all, set its background to variable primary color. And now let's give it a white text color. So give color variable and say secondary text color, which is a white color. Great. Now select the secondary BTN class for our second button. And here give background to transparent. So it will remove the background and give its color to variable primary color and also add a border of 0.1 RAM with a color of variable primary color. And this is how it looks. Well, this button is different from what we have in the design. Well, I found this look more much better than that. But if you want this to look like that, you can just say background color to a grayish color and you can change the color to default black. Now let's create this image container, which we have right here. Well, we have a lot of elements in this image container, so we will create them step by step. So where this hero info dev ends, after that add a comment hero image container. Well, I don't know what to call it. So I'm just calling it a, an image container and give it a class of hero section image container again. If you have more sensible class name, Feel free to use those and make an image with a class hero image. And this is the image that we're going to use for this container. So now let's style it first and then we will create other elements. So select this hero section image container and set its width to 30 RAM. Make sure you give a fixed width in order to create those other elements as well because we will going to use position absolute a lot. And in that case, we need a fixed width value. And give it a height of 80% and set its position to absolute. Now, if I check the web page, it looks something like this, where this image is overflowing. Now give its right to 10 VW. So it will come 10 VW away from right and set its bottom to zero. Well, we will small make the image small, but we want the image to be in the center. For that, we will give a flex box and set its justify content to center and this will make the image in the center of this hero section image container. Now let's just select the hero image and set its width and height to 100% and use object fit property and set it to contain to make the image fully cover this container. And it looks something like this. Now let's create other elements that we want in this hero image container. But before that, let me just correct my mistake. Let me set its position ab absolute to relative and this will make this potential word come below. So this is correct now. So now let's create other element, which is uh, the linear gradient stroke, circular stroke. For that, we will going to use pseudo element. So select the hero section container and uh, use before and after pseudo elements to create that gradient circular loop. If I zoom in the design, you can see this thing right here. This is what we will going to create using the for before and after pseudo classes. So first of all, set its content to empty screen because we don't want any text. Set its position to absolute and give it a top to 40% and left to let's say 50%. Now to make it perfectly centered, say transform, translate negative 50% and negative 50% and give it a width of 22, 25.5 rem 
along with a height of 25.5 rem so what it will do it will create a, a box and set its border radius to 100% so it will create a circle and give it a background of let's say black and you can see this black circle right here well we want it to below the image so set its set index to 1 and give this hero image set index to 2 so it will come above the circle great now we want it to be stroke right so so now select the before pseudo element and just set its background to the lighter accent color which is the background of our hero uh, section and now just to make its width and height little bit smaller so first of all set its set index to 2 so it will come above the after element and you can see that uh, a little very thin border is there so just change its width and height to 25.25 rem and now you can see a black border now instead of the black color background we will use the gradient color here which is the background diagonal gradients variable and now we have this gradient stroke which looks awesome isn't it now let's create this gradient circle which is below the image so it's simple it's just a, a div which is below the image so before the image make a div and give it a class let's say background element with a short form of ele let's just copy it and just to add a comma here to add the same styles to it as well we will just to make its size little bit smaller nothing else so select it individually and first of all set it stop to 37 percent and left to 52 percent well these values i have tested uh, earlier which works for me but if you want something else you can try with it and set it width and height to 20 ram and give it a set index of 2 so it will come above the before element and well you don't need to give this background property because in the default style we have the gradient color by default now let's see in the design what we have to create next so after this image of course you will add something so now let's create this youtube icon which will be of course clickable so make an anchor tag and uh, give it a class hero image maybe hero image social link we want this uh, uh, element to be clickable as well that's why i'm using anchor tag and since i don't have any actual link the hrf will be just simple hashtag now inside the anchor tag you can use image tag to create the image and just give it a youtube png path and yeah now let's just style it in the css to create that button so copy this class name and select it using the class selector let's give it a position absolute so that we can place it anywhere we want and set its padding to one ram give it a width and height of four ram so it will be a perfect square and give it a border radius of 100 percent to make it fully circle and give it a background to this variable which is the secondary text color which is a white color and now we have a box shadow in the design as well so use box shadow property give these values and in the shadow color use rgba to make a alpha black color well instead of giving the actual rgba as a shadow color well we will going to make a variable for that so in this root element make a social link shadow color name variable and here give that rgb color so that we can access the color using this variable and it will be more easy for us to change this color with fun click in future and now if i refresh well you can't see it because it's below the image so give it a z index of three so it will come above the images and now let's select the image which is the youtube image to make it a little bit smaller 
So select the hero image social link, which is the anchor tag and space image to select the image type. Here give width 100% along with the height of 100% and set its object fit property to cover. So it will be in proportions. Great. Now let's style or let's give the top left property to place this link. So we will select this hero image social link individually and we will not give the top value property here because we have these same images in other sections as well. So we will use this as a general class and then we will use separate and we will give the placing value separately. So here set its top to 17%, right to 15%. Again, this is I have tested out, but if you want, you can change these values and this is how it looks. I think it is pretty similar to the design. Well, if I open my inspector window and change the window size, well, you can see this icon is not moving anywhere because we have a fixed width for our hero image container. That's why we have given the fixed width instead of percentage value. So now let's create the subscriber element for that make a div and uh, give it a class, call it subscriber or anything. Inside the div, make an h1, add a text 1.50 million and uh, make a paragraph after that with a subscriber's text. And it looks something like this. So let's style it to make something look like which we have in the design. So select it in the CSS and set its position to again absolute so that we can place it anywhere we want. Set its top to 20% and left to minus 5% give it a padding of one ram and set its background variable white color well this white color is obviously a white color now give display flex to make it a flex box and instead of making elements side by side we will use flex direction column to make the elements above below each other's well it is already but uh, we use justify content center to make them centered and now let's add a shadow using box shadow and here again we will going to use this social link shadow color well since this is not a social link but uh, we are using this shadow color i think we should rename this variable to just simply shadow color so just remove the social link, social link from here and let me just change this thing from right here great now to make the subscribers come above the image give it a z index of 3 and set its border radius to 0.5 ram to have round edges and it looks something like this i think we don't need a display flex for this because by default it is looking similar or so we don't need display flex so let's just remove these flex properties because without them it's still going to look the same yeah it is looking same so just remove those flex box properties and now let's select the h1 since we don't have any class name for h1 select it using subscriber class and set its font weight to 400 which is a lighter font weight and now let's select the paragraph tag as well and set its font size to 0.7 ram to make it little bit smaller also give it a margin top let's say 0.5 ram to create spacing between the h1 and the paragraph i guess it's looking good but we can give more padding so in the subscriber let's add 1.5 ram padding from left and right and yeah that's looking great okay give a margin top to 0.2 ram and yeah that's good now let's create the last element which is the uh, review element so let's go to the index page and after this subscribers div make another div and let's call it hero review and inside it well if i go back to uh, my design you can see i have this icon here which is the quotes icon for that i am using font awesome so open a tab and search for font awesome cdn so this open this cdn.js website and click 
on this link tag to copy the font awesome cdn so what is cd uh, what is font awesome well font awesome is a, a package or library which we will use to uh, make the icons you can remove these cross origin and refer policy well because we don't need those attributes we just need the link of the file so that we can import it in the index page since we have our cdn now let's just search font awesome icon and now open this first link which is the font awesome link and then click on this search icon to search for it and to use the free icons click on the free icon and now here search for codes and let's see what code we have we have this one so click on it and just copy this i tag and we just need to paste this i tag here and this will make that icon in our website so this is font awesome and now make a paragraph and let's just copy and paste this text right here copy this hero review class and if i open the page well you can see that code icon there so now let's style it so select the hero review class and uh, set its padding to 1 ram 1.5 ram and give it a border radius of 0.5 ram to for round edges set its position to absolute so that we can place it anywhere and set its bottom to 10% with right to negative 5% and give the background color to variable white color which is the white color and use box shadow to give shadow to this hero review element give this values and use the shadow color variable to give the shadow color and set its width to let's say 80 percent and you can see the hero review right here let's give it set index to 3 so it will come above the image and i guess it's looking cool now give it display to flex so that the code and the paragraph come side by side and use gap property to add gap between them and now let's select the icon which is the quote icon so select the i tag and set its color to first of all the primary variable the primary color and set its font size to 2 ram to make it bigger and now select the paragraph of this hero review and first of all set its line height to 1.75 ram to create space between the lines and if i check my design i have this lato font family so let's go to google fonts and uh, here let's go to the home page and search for lato click on this and we will going to use this font as well so just select this uh, regular font fade and uh, let me open the side panel so that we can access the links so scroll down and just copy this third link because we have already above two links in our code so copy that third link and replace it with this third link which we have right here let me just copy it again and now this link will import lato as well as the previous font family and here give the font family to lato sans serif and this will change the font family of this hero review specifically i think the image size should be bigger so let's find where we have the image we have this hero section image container well let's change its height let's say 85 percent well it look good what it look on 90 percent let's say let's say 90 percent and i guess 90 percent height is looking good so with that our hero section is complete and now let's move on to the other section which is the brand section where we will display the brands so add a comment after this header and make 
a section and give it a class brand section well i'm not using id here because i'm not uh, giving this to any anchor link that's why so inside it make a paragraph and give it a class section secondary line we will use this sec section secondary line class for other sections as well that's why i am giving this class name after the paragraph make a div and give it a class brands container and this will be the wrapper of all the brands so now these brands are just images so make a div and give it a class brand and inside this div we will make the image using the image tag and we will give the image source or image path along with a class of brand image so that we can style it in the css and let's make multiple copies of it so if you just want to copy it in the vs code just use shift option or alt key plus the down arrow key to create copies of it and let's just quickly change the image paths for all the brands once done with it if i refresh the page you can see all the images here along with the paragraph so let's style them now inside css file let's style the brand section so instead of uh, uh, selecting the individual brand section we will going to select the section tag in order to style or give some general styles to all the sections because in the project we will use section for all these categories like for this faq or contact section so let's select the section tag and let's give its default padding to 6 rem from top and bottom and 10 width group from left and right and set its position to relative then select the section secondary line which is the paragraph element and let's set its text align to center because this will be also in other sections as well give it some margin from top and also from bottom let's say 5 rem from bottom and this is how it looks now let's style the brand container under this brand section comment so let's copy this brand section class and paste it here so use display flex to make the images side by side and save flex wrap in order to make that responsive and uh, use justify content space between to add space between the images now select the brand and give it a background of lighter accent color and give it a width of 4 rem along with a height of 4 rem to make it a perfect square and set its border radius to 5 rem or you can say 100% to make it fully circle along with a padding of 1 rem so you can see the circles right here now we just have to make the images small so select the brand image and set their width and height to 100% and give its object fit to cover to make them in proportions and we are done with our brand section it is looking same isn't it so now let's create this about section so inside the html file after this brand section add a comment let's call it about section and below it make a section tag and give it a id because we want it to be uh, we want user to redirect here so let's just copy this id and uh, in the navbar link of about us after that hrf hashtag give this id so whenever user click on about us it will take to this about section now in the about section we have two things one is the image container and the second is the actual text content which you can see right here so let's create this image container first so for that make a div and let's give it a class about us image container you can give anything you like and inside it make another div 
and give this div a class about us and we will wrap the image inside this div so inside it make an image tag and give it the image path which is about.png and we are done if i scroll down you can see the image right here so now let's style it first and then we will create the other elements so let me add a comment here and then let's select the about section using id selector and give its display to flex to make the image container as well as the uh, content side by side and say justify content to center along with align item to center and give gap of 8 rem between them so the image is in center right now because we don't have any other container any other element inside it now let's select the about image container which is this thing right here and let's give some style to it so first of all set its position to a relative and say display to flex so that we can align the image in the center and again give a fixed width which is 20 rem and a fixed height which is 35 rem and give it this flex property so by giving that flex property this will uh, never change its width even we are uh, using flexbox it won't change the size of it and now just say just by content center to make the image in the center well you can't see anything because these doesn't affect in visual aspect so now let's select the about us image which is the wrapper for our image and here let's give its width and height 200 percent and let's give it max height 200 percent of course and uh, give it a background of uh, variable accent color so it will get the bluish color and set its overflow to hidden along with a border radius of 10 rem so it will create that uh, round edges and it won't make our image go out of it so now we just have to make our image little bit smaller so select the image using about us image class again and here just set its fit 100% along with a height of 100% and say its object fit to cover so it will cover the wrapper and let's just remove the justify for now so that you can see that this is coming right here and it is looking same as the design so now if you see right here we have this gradient border here as well so for that we will going to use pseudo elements here also so select the about us image which is the wrapper and set its content to well basically a empty string set its position to absolute and give it a top and left to 50 percent to make it perfectly in the center you don't need to give this scale by zero because if scale by zero you won't be able to see the element right we will fix it i will fix it later in this video set its width and height 0.75 rem more than the actual width and height of this uh, about us image wrapper and give it a background of this background gradient variable which is the gradient and set its border radius to 10 rem to create that round edges and again i can't see anything because it is scale zero so if i just remove the scale y it will come up but first of all set its set index to minus one so it will come below the image and just remove this scale by zero so that it will be visible and like this we are done with this if you see the width and the height of this before pseudo element is 0.75 well make it 0.5 rem to make it more thin and uh, let's give it a transition of 0.25 second because we are going to give animation to it later in this video 
and in this about us image let's just give it set index to 2 so it will come above everything great now let's create these social links for that after this dev and make an anchor tag and in the href again set its hashtag because we don't have any actual link give it a class about image social link and this will be same as the hero image social link that we have created in the hero section so inside it make an image tag and give the image path here and let's just make more copies of it to change and change the image path after done with it just copy this class name and go into style.css file and find the hero section social link where we have styled for the hero section you can see that here just add a comma and add that class here as well and do the same for the image we are doing it because we want the same style for them as well you can see all the social links are in same place now we just have to change their places by selecting them individually so at the end select the about image social link and use the nth child to select them individually so by default you have to use nth child 2 because the first because the first element is the image element itself now set its right to 30% and uh, top to minus 5% and it will place this Instagram social link right here. Just copy this and paste it below three more times and let's just change the nth child number to three and four and let's give them the value. So for the third children say left to minus 10% and top to 20% and for fourth children set its right to 15% and top to let's say 20% let's just copy it one more time change the 4 to 5 to select the fifth children which is technically the fourth children set its right to 10% and top to let's just say 20% well this is not looking good Actually, for the four children, change the top to 30% and uh, instead of right, set the, change that right to left. And now it's looking good. So with this, the image container for this about section is done. Now we just have to create the content section, which is this benefits where we are showcasing what are the benefits. So let's create that. So inside the index page, after this about us image container, add a comment, let's say it about us and make a div below it. Give it a class about us and this will be the benefit card. So here make a paragraph, give it a class a section secondary line. This is the same class we have given in the brands section. So let me go to the design. Let's just copy this line and paste it right here. After that, make an H3 element and give it a class section title. So this H3 element will be the section title. So copy this and paste it right here. After that, we need these benefit cards. So now make a dev and give it a class benefit card. This will be the card where the image and the uh, benefit name will be listed. So inside it, make a div and give it a class card image and inside it, make an image tag. Give the image path, which is in this case is grow.png. And after that, make a paragraph and give it a class card name. And here, just copy this name and paste it. And this is our benefit card. You can see it right here. Let's just copy this benefit card and paste it four more times. Let me add space between them. And let's quickly change the image path. For the second one, it will be audience.png. For the third one, well, we have this money. So 
it will be slash cell.png and let's just copy the text as well to replace it with this. And for the fourth one, it will be the relation.png and again copy and paste the card name. So this is the HTML structure for the about us content. So let's style them in the CSS. Let's go to the CSS file and uh, let's first of all select this paragraph element and remove the bottom margin. So add a comment about us and inside it, let's select the about us section first, which is the div. Set its width to 100% and give it a minimum width of 350 pixels. So 100% it will cover everything after the image container. You can see it right here. Let's just remove the background, we don't need it. Now select the about us section secondary line and say it's text aligned to left. So it will be on the left side and just remove the bottom margin. So say margin bottom zero. Great. Now we have to style this H3 to make it bigger and lighter. So what we will do is in here where we have section styles, just copy this section title because this section title will be also going to be in other section as well. So just select them here and say margin 2.5 RAM from top and bottom and set its font size to 2 RAM. Give it a font weight of 400 to make it little uh, uh, lighter and uh, set its text align to center and give a line height of 3.25 RAM. Well, for in this case, we don't need it to be in center. So we will select the section title specifically using the about us class. And here we will say text align left in order to make it on the left side and also give it some margin bottom, let's say 4 RAM. And I guess we are good. Now let's style the benefit card. So select the benefit card class. and set its width to 100%, give it a height of 5 RAM and uh, give it a margin bottom of uh, let's say 2 RAM to create space between the cards and let's give a border so use border property say 0.1 RAM type will be solid and color will be this accent color variable if I zoom in you can see the border right here also give a border radius let's say 0.5 rem to uh, get the round edges and say display flex so that the image and the name will come side by side use cap property and add some padding to it also say align item center to make image and the name vertically center and add a transition of 0.25 second because we will going to have an over effect to it Great. Now let's select the card image, which is the wrapper of the image. Set its width and height to 3 RAM to make a square and say overflow hidden to hide the overflow from. Give it a background color of this accent color variable, which is that bluish color. And again, give a border radius of 0.4 RAM to get the round edges along with some padding. Now. Our image sizes are very big, that's why you can't see them. So select the images and let's make them small. So say their width and height to 100% and set their object fit property to cover. So it will be in the ratio. Great. Now select the card name and let's give it some styles too. So Set its font size to 1.1 RAM to make it little bit bigger. And with it, now we need to add the hover effect. 
So select the benefit card using its class name and then use colon hover to add the hover effect. So whenever we hover the card, set its background to this accent color variable and use transform property to make it 0.98 scale. And this is how the hover effect looks. So with that, we are done with this about section and now let's create our next section, which is the service section. So in the design, you can see this will be our service section. So let's create it. So inside the index.html file, let me collapse this about section. And after this about section, add a comment, call it service section. And below it, let's just make a section tag with an ID of service section. Now copy this service section ID and let's paste it in this navbar link. So whenever you click on this services, it will take you to this service section. But you can see that there is no smoothness. So to fix that in this HTML properties, add scroll behavior property and set it to smooth. So if I click on the links now, you can see it has that smooth transition. So now let's create the other elements. So in the service section, we have a heading and a para. So create S3 with a class section title. This will be the title of the section. Let's just copy this text and paste it here. Then make a para tag and give the class section secondary line. And again, copy the text from the design and paste it right here. Now after that we need service cards and this is how it looks. So add a comment here saying services card and then we will make a container. So make a dev and give it a class service container. This will contain all the six services cards. So make a dev and give it a class service card and then make another div with a class service and this will contain the service info such as the image and the name so make another div and this will be the service image so inside it make an image tag and give the image path and then we have this service name which we will create after this ser service image div so make a para and give it a class service name and we will just copy and paste this service name right here. So this service is a wrapper for the image and the name. And after that, make a para with a class service info, which will be this dummy tag explaining what the service really is about. So this will be the structure of our service card. So let's just copy this structure and well, you can see the output right here. So let's just copy this service card structure and paste it five more times. And now let's quickly change the images service name of all the individual cards by referring the design. So once you are done with this service card, you will see all the six cards in the output. So let's style them in the CSS. So after this benefit card, let me add a comment services section and below it, we will style our service section. So select the service container and make sure this 
is services container yeah so first of all give it a display grid so that we can use grid box to make three columns so set its grid template column to three of same size and then add a gap of 1.5 rem great now let's just style the service card so select it using class and first of all set its border to 0.1 rem of variable accent color now set a border radius of 0.25 rem for round edges and give it some padding let's say 1.5 rem and also add a transition because you will going to add a hover effect to it great you can see the border when i zoom in now select the services which is the wrapper for our image and the name set it to display flex so the image and the name will come side by side and give a gap now we just have to make the image smaller but to also give margin bottom to add spacing between the text below it now select the services image which is the image of uh, image div set its width and height to 3 rem to create a square and give it a padding also let's say 0.5 rem with a background color of obviously accent color and also give it a border radius to make round edges now we just have to make the images small so select the image using the services image class and set its width and height to 100 percent and use object fit property to maintain its ratio great now we have to make the name little bit bold so select the service name set its font size to 1.1 ram and give it a font weight of 400 to make it little bold and set text transform to capitalize great now select the service para which is the service info and uh, let's give it a font size of 0.9 ram and set its line height to maybe 1.5 ram to create spacing between the lines so this is our service section now if i go back to my design again and if i zoom in you can see i have this circle right here in the service section as well as on the left side too so let's create that circle so at the very top of the service section make a div and give it a class circle so it will be the circle but one we have in the right and one we have in the left so give one specific class which is the right and make a div at the very bottom of this section and just change this from right to left and now let's make that circle so select the circle and uh, first of all set its position to absolute so we can place it any way we want and set its pointer event to none so whenever you will take a mouse it will uh, respond to it and set its set index to negative one so it will come below every object every element and set its width and height to 10 ram with a border radius of 100% to get a perfect circle and set its background color to accent color with an opacity of 0.75 you can see the circle right here now let's select the circle using the specific class which is the right and the left so select the right one first and set its top to minus 3 ram with the right of negative 3 ram so it will go there as you can see on the right side the circle there now select the left circle now and set its bottom to negative 10 rem with a left of negative 2 rem and that circle you can see right here so these circles are done now let's add the hover effect to these services card so just scroll up in the code and find this benefit card hover we will have the same hover effect for the services card so let's just add that to here by using comma and now if i take my mouse over the cards you can see a, a nice little hover effect so we are almost like 50 to 60 percent done now let's create the faq but before that you can see that i am getting this overflow so to hide this horizontal overflow 
let's go to this body and just add overflow x hidden so it will hide all the overflow in the x direction so you won't be able to scroll in the horizontal axis great so now let's move on to our faq so in this faq section we have first of all the heading in para and then we have these faqs so below this uh, services section add a comment type faqs and make a section and here give it a id and let's say faq section and here make an h3 for the heading give it a class again section title for because it's a title let me just copy it now above it make a para because in the design we have above the heading a paragraph so make a para with a class section secondary line and just copy the text from the design and paste it in the code and if i go back to the web page you can see the para and a heading but there is a lot of space between them so let's fix that so in the style.css let me scroll down and add a comment faqs now select the faq section using the id and specifically select the hero secondary line it's not hero secondary line it's section secondary line make sure you correct that and just remove the margin bottom it's not working because the class name is wrong let me just fix the class name and it will set the margin bottom to 2 rem and now it's looking good or actually let me get 1 rem to make it a little bit closer great now we have to add some margin bottom to this heading so select that a uh, section heading or section title let me just copy this class name and uh, again select it using the faq section id and just give it a margin bottom of 5 rem now let's create the faq so add a comment below the h3 and now make a div and let's give it a class faq so this will be the main container for the question as well as the answer inside it make a div with a class question box and this will contain the question as well as the uh, arrow which will uh, rotate on expansion so inside it make an s3 give it a class question and just copy the question from the design and paste it right here and the second thing this question box will have is this icon right here if i zoom in you can see this icon so again we will going to use font awesome for that so open the font awesome and search for this carrot up and you will find this icon carrot up just click on it and copy this i tag and paste it below this h3 so if i check the web page you can see the portion and below it the icon the arrow icon so after this question box make another div and give it a class answer box and this answer box will be the container for the answer inside it just make a p tag and give it a class answer and let's just copy that dummy paragraph answer or you can use lorem 20 for 20 words it's just a vs code extension let's just copy this faq card four more times because we have total five faq and let me just quickly change the question of all these faqs So this is how it looks right now and let's style them to look much better. So inside the style.css file, first of all select the FAQ which is the wrapper of question box and the answer box. Set its width to 100% with a border radius of 0.25 gram 
and give it a border of 0.1 gram with a color accent color. Set its position to relative and give its margin bottom to maybe 2 gram to create space between the two FAQs and also give it a transition because you are going to add some over effect to it as well. You can see the border and the space between the FAQ. Now let's select the quotient box and uh, first of all let's give it display to flat so that the quotient and the icon will come side by side and set its justify content to space between to have space between those two elements as you can see right here. Now set its align item center to make it vertically center and give it a padding of a one ramp from all four direction and it is looking good. Now set its cursor to pointer so whenever you take your mouse over it, it will change into hand. And now let's select the quotient itself and let's style that. So set its font weight to first of all 400. And now select the uh, quotient icon using the eye tag and set its width to 2 RAM and give it a flex of this so it will not affect its 2 RAM even we are using the flex box. Set its text align to center and give it a transform rotate of 180 degree along with a transition of 0.5 second. So it will come down because we have 180 degree of rotation. Now select the answer box. And here we will do something tricky because making FAQ is easy but the transition of expansion is not easy so that's why in the answer box set its display to grid and by default set its grid template row to zero. So basically its row size will be zero so whenever we will say overflow hidden it will hide the paragraph and we just have to change this row from zero fr to a full size so it will show the paragraph that way we can add a smoothness on expansion otherwise it won't affect so select the answer and set its overflow hidden and since we have a gray template with zero a size of row you won't see the answer also give it some line height of 2 gram with some padding when you can see so now let's style the active styles so add dot active class to this faq so whenever this faq will have this active class we want these styles to be applied so in the ocean box first of all set its background to lighter accent color let me add this active class to this first faq great now when this faq has active class select the question box the icon and first of all set its color to primary color which is this bluish color and set its rotation to zero so it will go up instead of facing down as you can see right here now the answer box and set its padding to let's say 2 frame from top and bottom and give it a template row of 1 fr so it will cover the whole space and that way you can see the answer inside it. I guess this black color of this icon is not looking good so let's just add the default color to primary color and let's just remove this primary color from the hover effect uh, from the active class so now its by default color will be this primary color which is the blue glow so we are done with this active class now we just have to toggle it from the javascript so make sure you have this app.js linked in the index file and then open app.js file first of all here select the faq card so select it using document.query sector all well 
Query selector all will give you a node list. To convert that node list into an array, we are using these square brackets. And inside it, you can add the FAQ class. So it will select all the elements which are having this FAQ class. So if I open my console and this type FAQ, you can see I got five FAQ divs because we have five total FAQ cards. Now we just have to add the click event to it in order to toggle the FAQ. So use a map function to loop through each FAQ element and select the individual FAQ. So first of all, we will select the question box. So define a question variable and instead of saying document.querySelector, say FAQ.querySelector and just pass this question box class which has this quotient and the icon. So what it will do, instead of document, I have this FAQ here, so it will search this quotient box class within this FAQ element, instead of checking it inside whole document. And just add a click event to it using add event listener, and inside the callback, say FAQ, which is this element, and say class list to access the class list. And since we have to toggle the active class, say dot toggle and just remove this dot we don't need a dot and say active so whenever you click on the question box it will toggle the active class from it. and our faq section is working fine now we have to add the hover effect to these faqs so again go back to style.css file and here select the faq class and apply the hover effect so whenever we hover the faq what we want first of all scale down a bit so let's say scale to 0.99 just a 0.01 scale and set its background to lighter accent color so if i hover you can see it is working but i don't want the hover effect when it is active when it is expanded so just add a knot here and say active so it will only apply the hover effect when this faq will not have this active class so if faq has this active class you can see the hover effect is not working and with that our faq section is also done now let's make the contact section so in our contact section we have this form on the right side and this contact image container on the left side as you can see right here so let's create it in the web page so inside the html file add a comment let's say contact section and again make a section tag and we will give it an id let's call it contact section and we will use this id again so whenever user click on this link it will take it uh, the user to this contact section so just copy this link copy this id and go to the top where the links are and just paste it after the hashtag like this and now let's code our section so the first thing in the contact section is the image container so let's code that first so after the comment make a dev and uh, let's give it a class let's call it contact the section contact us actually contact us image container so this will contain the image as well as the social links now inside it make an image tag for the contact image so give it a source and also give it a class let's call it contact us image and if you see the output you can see i have this image so let's style it now add a comment let's call it contact section so you will be more clear in future what it's about select the contact section using its id and first of all set its background to the accent color variable and let's set its display to flex so that the image container and the form will come side by side and set its justify content to center to align them in the center and give a property of uh, give a gap of 5 rem great now let's style this image container first so select the contact us image container now first of all set its position to relative 
and reset its display to flag so that we can align the image in perfectly center. Also give it a width of 25 frame and give it a height of let's say 40 frame. So it will be a sort of rectangle and set its flex to this so it won't change its size even though it's a flex box. Great, you can remove the background, we don't actually need it. And set its justify content to center along with the align item center so the image will come perfectly in the center. Now you can see the image is big, so we have to actually shrink it down. Now let's select the contact us image. and set its width and height to 100% so it will cover the whole parent container and again use object fit property to make it in the proportions and set its set index to 2 so it will come above so that we can place absolute elements below it now if you see in the design i have this gradient circular circle behind this image so let's create that so we were going to use the before pseudo element for that so let's just select the contact us image container and use the before pseudo element to create that circle and first of all set its content to just an empty string because we don't want any text and set its position to absolute so that we can align it anywhere we want for this specific time, we need it in, to be in center. So just set its top left to 50% and use transform property to make it perfectly centered. Now set its width to do something like 25 frame and also give it a height of 25 frame along with the border radius of 100% to make a perfect circle and set its background to this variable, which is background diagonal gradient and just set it set index to 1 so it will come below the image because our image is z index 2 and you can see the circle behind this image great now in the design if you come to the down you can see this white text and we will create that using the after pseudo element so select the container again and now make the after this time and in the contact instead of letting it an empty string just copy this text and paste it right here so that it will create uh, uh, this text so that it will create this text and we just uh, going to place this at the bottom with a white background so set its position to absolute and just to give it a bottom let's say it minus 2 ram and give it a padding of 2 ram along with a line height of 2 ram and you can see the after element below the image so set its border radius let's say 0.5 ram for the round edges and set its background to white color and you can see that after element behind the image so just set its set index to 3 or 2 so it will come above the image great and set its text align to center so it will look much better but in the design we don't have it in the center let me just make that in the center so we are done with this now we just have to create these social links these are same as the about us section and the hero us section so we just have to make them again so make an anchor tag and for now we will just leave slash rf again because we don't have any actual link and in the class let's call it contact us or actually just call it contact image social link you can call it whatever you want and inside it make an image tag just provide the image path and we are done just make multiple copies of it let's make three more copies of it and let me just quickly change the image paths of each of these links and then we will style them. In the output, you can see the images. Now we just have to style them. So 
just go on the top of the CSS page where we have the hero section and the about section social links right here and just add a comma and uh, select here the contact image social link to apply the same classes to the styles to them and just copy this and paste it below here where we are selecting the image element as well. like this and if i refresh well nothing happened let me check well you can see there is a full image spelling instead of short form img and now it's correct now we just have to style all the links individually to place them on their places so let's select the first contact image link using the uh, and child and in this case the end child 2 will be the first social link again why because the image itself is the first child set it left to minus 5 and top to 50 percent and you can see that instagram right here now to select the second one we are going to select the third nth child so you can just copy and paste it three more times to create the fourth link and just change the number to select each other for the second one, set the right to 10% and top to 20% and you can see that Facebook right here. Now let's select the third one which is our fourth and child and for this one, let's say it's left to 10% and top to 20% and for the last one, let's say it's right to 0% and bottom to 30%. And this is how it looks so we are done with this uh, image container now we have to create the contact form so let's create that contact form so after this uh, where this contact us image container is ending after it add a comment let's call it contact us form and again below it make a div give it a class contact us and inside it make an h3 for the section heading and again give it a class section title let's just copy this title and paste it here, right here and we will uh, not going to make any p tag for section info so make a form give it a class contact form and inside it we will make the actual form so in the form we have three inputs and one text area we have name, email, and the third will be the subject actually, and the fourth will be the text area. So make an input. First of all, name will be the type text. Use required attribute. So you uh, user won't be able to submit it uh, without filling it. And use these basic attributes. For the subject, set its type to text again and in the placeholder you can type anything you want i am saying your business code because it's a, a business promotion website and then at the end we need a text area text uh, where user can type its message actually so add a text area remove all these attributes and uh, give it a name so the uh, name attribute will help you once you submit the form and in the placeholder you can say tell us more about your business just like that and we have a form also give a required attribute so user won't be able to submit it without filling it you can see all those four inputs right here now we need a submit button so make a button and uh, give it a type submit so html will know that this button should submit a form and give it a class btn and say primary button so it will add the styles of uh, our primary buttons as you can see right here great now we have this form we have these names so you can just uh, add the action attribute in the form to send the data wherever you want you can provide any server route here 
but i don't have any so i'm just leaving it to you now let's start it select the contact us which is our form and uh, set its width to 200% so it will cover a whole space set its minimum width to 350 pixels and now let's select the heading or the section title of it set its text align to left so it won't be uh, in the center like this now select the contact form and uh, set its margin top to give some margin from top great now let's style the inputs make sure you don't add the dot at the beginning because it's not a class we are selecting the input tag you can see it's not working because i'm selecting the input class just remove the dot and now the display block will work set its width to 100 percent so it will cover the whole space and give it a height let's say 3.5 run give a border none and this gives some padding let's say one gram from top and bottom and 1.5 gram from left and right like this now give it a outline give it an outline none so it will remove that green border and give margin bottom one gram to create spacing between the inputs set border radius to 0.25 uh, gram for round edges and font size and this is how it looks you can notice that our text area font is different than the input so let's fix that and also if you notice i am able to uh, resize this text area size so select the text area and first of all give its font family to whatever we have in the body because generally this font family uh, doesn't apply in the text area by default so we have to give it separately in the text area now set its uh, resize to none so a user won't be able to resize it and set its uh, height to 20 rem so it will be a fixed height of 20 rem and give it a font weight of 300 and now it looks same as our inputs great now select the placeholder using two columns in the front and uh, let's just change the color to primary text color which is black right now but you can change it if you want to change the theme color and yes we are done now if you notice in the btn uh, submit button we have this border so let's fix that border so let me just go in the top where this uh, button styles are and let's just add here border to none along with the outline to none so it will remove the border and the green outline as well great also set its cursor to pointer so whenever i will take my mouse over it it will change to hand and with that everything is done now we have to just create the photo and then we can go and make this website responsive In the design after the contact section of course we have this photo and in the photo i have this logo with the social links and these uh, links to redirect the user wherever they want right so after this section just add a comment and call it photo and instead of using section we are going to use an actual photo tag and here make a tag for the logo and the social links let's call it company info and inside it we will make this logo as well as the social links so follow logo make an image tag and give it a path of the logo as simple as that with a class logo so of course then we can start it for the social links make a div and call it uh, social links and inside it just use an anchor tag and inside it make an image which will be the social media image and just make the copies of it and change the image path and this will be our social links so once you are done with this if i check the output well let me refresh it you can see the logo and the images now let's style it so 
give an id to this photo well it's not needed but if you want you can give and add a comment here photo and below it we will of course style the photo so select the photo using id and uh, set its position to relative and give it a padding of 4 ram from top and bottom and 5 pw from left and right set its display to flex so all the things will come side by side and set its justify content to space between to add space between the elements and give it a gap of 4 ram like this now select the logo and set its height to 3 ram so it will be much bigger and give it a margin bottom like this now select the social links which is the container of the anchor links make sure you set its social link because we have s in the class and first of all set its display to flex so all the links will come side by side and give it a cap great you won't see any difference because the images are too big so select the anchor tag first and set their width to 2.5 ram with a height of 2.5 ram and give it a padding let's say 0.5 ram and set its border radius to 100 to make a perfect circle and give background a variable lighter accent color so you can see these circular anchor links right here now we just have to make the images small because they are too big so select the images like this and uh, set their width and height to 100 percent and again give object fit to cover so it will maintain its ratio and the social links are looking good now after the company info we have these uh, sort of links where user can click to redirect wherever this company info is ending make another div and give it a class let's call it photo links container so this uh, will be the container of the photos but uh, uh, if you see we have three different uh, photo links category which is useful link information and contact us so we need a specific class uh, for individual container as well so in the start for this one say useful links so useful links will be the specific class for this div and this photo link container will be this general class which we will use to add styles inside it make an h5 tag and give it a class photo links title and this will be the title of each category let me just copy and paste the text and after it just make a simple anchor tag and give a class photo links because they will be the uh, links so just simply copy and paste all these text to create the link and again we don't have since we don't have any uh, href i'm just setting the href to the simple hashtag so if i scroll down you can see this useful links category there just copy it and paste it one more time below and just change this useful links to information because this will be the specific class for this category and let me just change the title of this category and these links as well so do that then we will create the third category now again copy it and paste it to create the third category and remove this information class and instead say it contact because this will be the contact info and change the heading to this contact us and since this is not a links container this will be the text container because these phone and email will be simple text remove the anchor tag and instead of it we will create simple p tag with a class photo text and it will be a simple text so let's just copy this text and paste it again make another p tag for the phone number and do the same for the email
so after done with that if i just scroll down you will see all three categories that we need now we just have to style them so let's go back to our style.css file and let's select the footer links container here first of all set the justify self to end so they will align themselves in the end we need it so whenever they are small they will stick to the end make sure the class name is correct and now select the footer links title which is the heading of each category and first of all set their text transform to capitalize to make the first letter capital and give them a margin bottom so it will have margin between the links and the title and now you can select the links using its class which is footer link and also select the footer text because both will have the same class so give them a color which will be primary text color a simple black color and then set its text decoration to none for the link so that it will remove the underline give them some border a bottom margin and set its display to block so it will cover the whole space and text transform and this is how it looks great now let's select the footer text and set their margin bottom to one gram so it will have more margin bottom compared to the links and select the footer links so that we can add hover effect to them and once we will hover just change the opacity to 0.5 so it will just fade away when you hover it and these are text so there will be no hover effect instead of hover let just change the color to this primary color i think that will look much better yeah it is so in the design after this footer we have this copyright line and it's just so easy to make after this footer link container just add a p tag and give it a class just copy the text and paste it right here and let's just style this single line which is this copyright set its position to absolute and set its width to 100% along with a left to 0 and a bottom to 0 so it will stick at the bottom of the photo set text align to center and give it a padding of 0.5 gram from top and bottom and set the color to secondary text color which is the white color and set the background to the primary color which is the bluish color and if i scroll down you can see that copyright text here now we are done with the whole website now we have to make it responsive so right click on the page and open your inspector window and uh, this is how our site looks in smaller devices so now let's make it responsive so if i resize my web page well you can see on the top right there is a size mention you if i just uh, resize it again you can see there is a pixelated uh, value uh, which is changing so that uh, is our width of the screen so we will change the things elements styles according to that width right so let me just uh, say our html font size to let's say 14.5 pixels and you can see by changing the font size of this html everything is getting uh, everything is small now so this is the uh, benefit of using rem value everywhere instead of pixel value so that you just need to change the font size of HTML at once and everything will change accordingly. So now let's work on that principle and let's make it uh, responsive. So in the style.css file at the end add a comment media query and if you don't know we are uh, going to use the media query to make the website responsive. So say max width 1200 pixel. Well, Max width basically means the maximum width should be. So if a width is going to be 1201 pixels, the styles inside the block will uh, not going to apply on the page. So when the screen size is 
at most 1200 pixels. Just select the HTML and set its font size to 14.5 pixels. And everything is small now. Let me just remove that by default font size. And yeah, everything is small. So now let's uh, style individual sections. So first of all, let's style the hero section. And uh, now you can click on this uh, arrow icon. And if you click on it, now if uh, you take your mouse to the uh, web page, you will be able to select the element. So here if you are seeing that uh, if I just remove the minimum height of hero section, the styles look this. And if I just add padding of 10 rem to uh, 10 VW, it looks something like this, which is what exactly what we want. So let's uh, just select the hero section here using the ID and let's just uh, add those styles here. So set my uh, minimum height to auto and uh, give it a padding of 10 rem from top and bottom along with 10 VW from left and right. Now again click on this mouse uh, icon arrow and uh, let's select the H1 and here change the font size to 3 rem and uh, maybe the line height to 4 rem and yeah it is looking good. So through this inspector window you can uh, see the result of the style in real time and once you are happy with the styles just copy this whole thing and paste it inside the style.css file remove the font weight because it is the same we didn't change it again click on the arrow icon and select the element we want in this case the image element let me expand this uh, code view right here so that i can uh, select the exact element that i want which is this hero section image container which is the container of the image and the subscribe and the link everything and let's just say transform scale 0 0.9 so it will uh, shrink it down you can see the uh, everything is little bit small 0 0.9 i think it looks good now it is uh, a little bit above the top so if i say translate x and 5 rem so it is on the right hand side now now to make it on in the bottom just to use transform origin and set it to bottom and you can see this is how it looks which is exactly what we want you can just copy the styles now and below the hero heading select the hero section image container and paste those styles and refresh and everything is okay after the hero section i guess the brand section is uh, good but there is so much padding in our sections as you can see here we have a lot of space so let just uh, let's just make this uh, padding a little bit smaller so select the section and you can see the padding uh, style here let's just change it to 2.5 rem and uh, yeah i guess it is good let's change the 2.5 rem to 3 rem or 3.5 rem and yeah 3.5 rem uh, looks better so we can apply this style in the code. Let's just uh, copy this whole thing and uh, let me paste it here. Remove the uh, app position related because it is unchanged and add a comment above section so you'll know. Great. Now if I come below, I guess everything is looking good. The services section is also good. The FAQ is also pretty good. And about the contact section, well, I need, uh, we need a little bit of fixing right here. So let's uh, make this image container a little bit smaller. So select the image container, but before it, uh, let's change the cap property to maybe 2 RAM to decrease the cap. And let's select the uh, image container and let's set uh, its transform scale to maybe 0 0.9 and yes it is looking good so let's just add those styles in the css file so select the uh, contact section first and change the cap to 2 gram which we did in the inspector window and now select the contact to us image container and uh, give the transform property to scale it down to 0 0.9 
and yes so our website is good for 1200 pixels width and if i make the window size little bit small you can see at exactly 998 pixels we are going to add another breakpoint for our media query where we will going to add some other styles to make it more responsive so make sure your window size is smaller or exactly to 998 pixels because that will be the next media query breakpoint and again this max width just tell apply these styles if the screen size is below or equal to dimension size so so first thing select the html and set font size to 13 pixel and it will make everything much smaller as you can see right here so everything seems more responsive right now but still we can't just change the font size to uh, make the website responsive right so let's add more responsiveness to it so again click on this arrow icon and now try to select this uh, hero sections uh, paragraph and now let's see what we can change here so let me just select the hero paragraph here and let's just change it line height to 1.75 ram now select the image container using again the mouse icon and uh, uh, here just change the width to let's say 45 percent to make it little bit bigger in width and uh, change so you can see it is much bigger in a uh, width so let's select it in the css and give that width property right here now select the uh, hero section image container before which is the uh, border the gradient border set its top to 25 percent and uh, let's make it a little bit smaller so set the width and height to 18 rem and again select the after element and just set the width to 18.5 rem and height to 18.5 rem and you can see this is the gradient border which is now a little bit smaller so now we want the uh, circle behind the image to be uh, of that size again so select the background element because it is the background element class if you remember and now set its top 25 percent width and height to 14 gram and this will look like this which is in my opinion is good you can uh, change the width and top properties according to yourself however you like now select the hero image and set its height to 110 percent which make it much bigger but you can see there is a overflow so to hide the overflow just what we are going to do is when we have this overflow just select this hero section using its id and just say overflow hidden so it will hide any overflow and it will cut off the image overflow great now select the subscriber element and let's make it closer to the image so set its top to 10 percent and left to maybe somewhat 10 percent you can also do these same things in the inspector window to see uh, in real time what these values will do now select the hero review which is uh, the review and set the padding to one frame and also let's change the border radius to 0.2 rem to make it little less round and change the gap to 0.75 yeah like this now select the hero review uh, the quote icon and just change its font size to 1 point rem and give some margin top to let's say 0.25 rem and yeah now it is looking better now select the hero uh, image social link which is the youtube link and let's place it closer to the image so set top 5% and right to 15% and uh, 
yeah let's change it to 20 percent uh, yeah now it is looking good so you can see if the screen size is above 1998 uh, 998 pixel the styles are different but at the 998 pixels or less the styles are different now let's work on this about section so again use that icon to uh, select the element and for the about section let's change the cap to 2 rem maybe 3 rem to decrease the cap and let's select this about us image container and let's scale it down a little bit so again we will just give the transform property and just say it's scaled to maybe 0. Point something let me do it correctly uh, 0. 0.9 and yeah with the scale scale down it's looking good so add a comment here about section and below it let's just select the about section using the id first of all and change the cap to 3 ram great and now select the about us image container and let's scale it down to 0 0.9 yeah now uh, the services section so let's uh, make it a 2 by 2 uh, grid instead of 3 columns let's make uh, th uh, 2 columns so add a common services section and again select the services container which is the container of our service card and use grid template columns to change the column we need to that's why I just say 2 comma 1 fr to cover the whole space and here we go the service section is looking good after that we have the faq well it is already looking good so i don't think so we needed to make it responsive let's come to the contact section and here i need i think we need to work so add a common contact section and let's work Select the contact section using its ID and uh, let's set its cap to 1 RAM to make it more close to the image container and now let's select the image container and scale it to, to 0 0.8. I guess it is looking good. So now let's uh, work on our footer. So select the footer uh, link, footer links container. And uh, what we want is uh, we want the information one. So select the information one and uh, just to give it a minimum width. Why we are giving minimum width? Because in the information, we have this last text, which is going uh, getting wrapped in these model devices. So, giving minimum width won't let it wrap and with that the website is responsive for the 998 pixels or less screen size as you can see every section is looking great so now let's resize the window and let's make the screen size much less now the other breakpoint we will going to use is 760 pixels the screen size will be 760 pixels so make sure the screen size of your window is less than or equals to 760 pixels now again use the edge rate media and set the max width to, to 760 pixels now here we will, uh, won't select the html because we can't just do a make our uh, font size to like literally a lot uh, smaller that at point user can't see anything right so first of all we are going to style or make this navbar responsive so select this navbar and the first thing we want in our navbar is a toggle button from where we can toggle the uh, nav links so inside the html at the end of this links container make a div which will be going to be the toggle button so make a div and let's give it a class toggle btn or nav toggler you can call it anything and inside it just make three span for three uh, sticks that we are going to use copy this class and go at the very top first and just after this below class navbar class just select the nav toggler and set the display to none so it won't be a display in a bigger screen 
and we will set its display to block in uh, the this uh, 760 pixels media query so here select the nav toggle and uh, yeah select the uh, set the display to block so it will show and set the width and height to 3 ram now set the border to 0.1 gram solid with a color of primary color which is the bluish color so that we can see it and set the border radius to maybe 0.2 gram for round edges and if i refresh you can see the nav toggle right here now set its position to relative because the span inside it going to have the absolute uh, position and say cursor to pointer so you will get the hand icon and uh, give it a transition of 0.5 second and also give some margin now let's style its span so select the nav toggle span and uh, just to set its position to absolute and just to give the top to 50%, left to 50% so that we can perfectly align the span tags in the center. And set its width to 70% with the height of 0.1 gram. Give its border radius to 1 gram for the round edges, doesn't matter actually. And give the background to primary color. Also add a transition because we need the transition in this case now we just need to select the span tag individually so that we can place it in the top and the bottom so use the nth child for that and select the first span tag first and set its top to 30 percent and you can see a span tag on the top and now again copy it and paste it below and select the last nth child which is the third one you can't see anything because it is top 30 so let me change the top 30 to 70 percent and now you will be able to see three horizontal sticks so we need it to get in a cross shape when the nav bar is when you click on the toggle so we will achieve that by this active class so whenever this nav toggle will have this active class let me just add the active we are just removing the border so the border is uh, gone now and whenever this nav toggle has is this uh, active class just to select the span tag select the first span tag actually and just rotate it so set its top to 50 so it will come in the center and use the transform property to rotate it 45 degrees So if I refresh, well, make sure everything is correct. The class name should be correct and you can see the uh, span is rotated now. Now again, select the uh, second span tag and the second we will just hide it. So set its width to 0 and uh, copy this first nth child and paste it here and change it to 3 to select the last one and just change the rotate value to negative 45 degree and this is how the cross is looking so if i go here and change this active uh, remove this active class you can see it is getting its original shape and i'm adding the active class it is converted is changing into cross now if I come down in the transition, if I expand it using this arrow, you can see here it is saying transition timing function ease. If I click on this purple thing, I got a graph, right? Let me just add here 0 0.5 second ease so that you can see it. If I click on this uh, purple uh, square, you can see I get the graph which I can edit. And as I am changing, it is changing the uh, motion or timing of our transition. As you can see above uh, how this ball is moving on the change of the graph. So we will use this to add a smoothness or you can say a motion to our uh, spans. So let's just copy that cubic base here that I just uh, created with this graph and paste it right here. So if I now remove the active class, you will see there is a difference. There is a, a different motion than what we have earlier. 
let me just change it to one second so that you can see it clearly yeah now if i add the active class you can see there is a different motion than what we have earlier and i'm going to use you can edit the graph and uh, uh, feel free to get any motion you want now select the links container so that we can style it and set it display to blog instead of flag so every link will come below each other and now set its width to 100% and left to 0 and uh, give top to 100% yeah and now set its position to absolute and give a, a background of uh, accent color as you can see the background also give a transition of 0.5 seconds and select the links container link item now and just uh, change the text align to left with the height of 4 RAM it is not working let me see it should be items and yeah now we will select the anchor tag which is the links itself now just set the display to block so it will cover whole space and just give the width 200% with the margin of auto and give padding of 1.2 rem from top bottom and 10 video blue from left and right and this is how it will look now select the links and let's style it over state so whenever you going to hover it just change its background color to this primary variable primary color variable and change the color to white which is the secondary text color so if I hover it, you can see the hover effect is working. I guess we should add some transition to it. So in the links, just add a transition. Let's say 0.5 second. I guess 0.5 second is too much. Let's make it maybe 0.1 second or two. Yeah. And yeah, that's good. So after then with that, we just need to hide this link and show it using the nav toggler button that we have just created. So by default in the link container, set its height to zero and just say overflow hidden. So it will hide the overflow what we have right now and say Z index to minus one. So it won't show and it will go below everything like this now we will just change the values back to the default ones when we click on the nav toggler so add the active class for the link container and in the active class just change the height to 12 RAM, which is a fixed value after setting the height to 2 let me just add the active class you can see 12 RAM is not enough for this uh, one so let me just change the 12 RAM height to let's say 14 RAM still not enough 16 ram yeah 16 ram is good so we will change the 12 ram to 16 ram in the code now we just have to toggle the classes from javascript let me just remove the active from that power and in the app.js now let's make the toggle button working so in the javascript file let's create the nav toggle so first of all declare a variable call it toggle btn and let's select the toggle button from the html using the query selector method pass the class name nav toggle here now make another variable which will be the links container and select the links container again using the query selector method pass the class name once we have both of the elements, 
just select the toggle btn and add the event listener click so whenever we going to click on the toggle btn what we want we just want to toggle the active class so say class list dot toggle and inside it the class name which is the active just make another copy of it and instead of toggle btn say links container so if i refresh and click on it the class is toggling but it's not working actually the active spelling is wrong let me correct it now again if i go uh, if i check yeah you can see everything is working fine our nav toggler is working fine and this is the way you create a nav bar responsive great so now we can move on to our hero section and uh, here we can make the image and the uh, text to come below each other instead of side by side so let's do that so add a comment hero section and uh, here select the hero section using the id and set its flex direction to column so instead of flex direction uh, to normal say column and you will see that the text is in center but nothing happened to this image why because it's absolute position so just set its position to relative and you can see it is coming below the text and if you want it to come above the text just say column reverse so it's it will reverse the direction and now it's good so select the hero info which is the text and the button set their width to 80 percent and do the stuff great now just select the hero image container and first of all set its position to relative and then give it a width of 350 pixels which will be the fixed width and height of 500 pixels great now select the hero image and just set its height to 100% again instead of 110% looks good now in, inside of hero section just add the cap property and the padding as well so first of all change the padding to 5 rem and uh, now add the cap to 5 rem so it will add the gapping between the hero info and the image container now we just need this review to be at the bottom so you won't be able to see the bottom of the image for that select the hero review using its class and set its bottom to zero and uh, right to 10 percent and it will make the uh, it will place this hero review in the bottom now select the subscribers and let's place it to top 10 percent and left to 10 uh, actually left to zero percent with a transform scale one so we don't need it to make a little bit smaller nothing like that just transform one now i guess we are done the hero section is looking good the nav bar is done now let's style this brand section because uh, uh, we have a lot of brand logo here so let's make that responsive too so select the brands container which contains all the individual brand icons and just say just where i want into center so it will align them in the center increase the gap to 2 rem and it is good it is wrapping because we have flex wrap in the default styles now just select the about section and again we will change its uh, flex direction to make uh, the image container and the content come side uh, below each other instead of side by side so select the about section using id remove the dot from the beginning and uh, just say padding to rem just add some padding and uh, width height and uh, just to say flex direction to column reverse well column reverse will make this image go down we want it to be up so see column and the image is on the top and then we have this content and the about section is also done now let's make the service section of one column instead of two columns so select the services container but before that let's just remove this right circle so select the circle of right class and just say display none why we are removing it because it will create an overflow effect 
which we don't want in responsiveness right so just leave it and actually we will make this service card of one column in the uh, much smaller uh, screen sizes so we will do it later let's work on this contact form as you can see these are getting too much closer so let's uh, make them in the column direction as well so just add contact section and apply the about section class as well here why it's not working yeah make sure the uh, screen size or window size is less than the breakpoint we need to give a little bit of capping here as well so add gap maybe 5 rem and uh, our contact section is also responsive now now let's style this footer and make it responsive as well so let me just add a comment footer and let's uh, select the footer using its class and just say flex direction to column so it will make every element come below each other and change the padding to 4 rem from top and bottom and 10 vw from left and right like this now we want these links to come side by side so here we will use display flex so select the footer links uh, container which will contain which contains the uh, text and the links just say display flex so then uh, so that they come side by side and say flex wrap so it will be responsive and add a gap of one gram like this now we need this uh, uh, title of this container of this category to be of a display block so that they will cover 100 percent of their width so select the footer uh, title which is the footer links title And just set their minimum width to 100 percent so it will cover the entire row and say margin bottom to zero and this is how it's going to look we actually don't want these contact info to come side by side but rather we want it to come up below each other so we are going to use this not selector and we can here pass the contact class so it won't apply these styles for the contact category the specific contact category now we want the uh, margin bottom for that so here again use the not category and just select the contact section and just select the footer links title like this so it will remove uh, remove the stylings from it great i guess the gap between them is too much so let's uh, add gap of 2 rem and uh, yeah that is looking cool let me add that in the code and our footer contact section and every section including the navbar is responsive now so let's make the screen size little bit smaller now let's go to 560 pixels and this will be the smallest screen size uh, which we will going to deal with and let's make things responsive for this screen size so let's go back to the style.css file and after this 760 pixel breakpoint add another media query breakpoint and say max width to be 560 pixels so if the screen size is less than or equals to 560 pixels we want first of all html to hide any overflow we don't want any overflow so we are just hiding if any in the uh, in any cases if we have now select the hero section and uh, first of all select the hero info and instead of its 80 percent width set the width to 100 percent so it will cover the entire uh, screen now select the hero heading and just to make it a little bit smaller set the font size to 2.5 rem and change the line height to maybe 3.5 rem you can change these value according to your uh, whatever you like now let's change the service container to uh, of one column instead of two columns so add a comment services and now just select the services container 
and just say create template column one fr so it will create only one column which will going to look like this and after that the faq is responsive and contact section is responsive when fr is responsive so our website is fully responsive for uh, mobile devices and for the tablets you can see how the website is looking in the iphone 12 screen size and it's looking pretty good but there is a still one issue and which is larger screen so if i change the screen size to let's say this 4k resolution you can see here it is seen 4k in the 4k resolution size our website is not responsive so we uh, made the uh, this, uh, website for mobile responsive but we haven't made it for larger screens for that we don't need to do that much thing we just need to uh, add two three lines and it will uh, become responsive so let's add another media query and we will add at the top of every breakpoint and we will say minimum width should be 1440 pixels so 1440 pixels will be minimum width so if the screen size is less than this 1440 pixels the style won't apply and here just change the html property font size to 20 pixels and if i refresh well you can see if i am above 1440 pixels so if i click on 1440 pixels resolution this is how the site is looking and if i go below 1440 pixels these uh, things are changing like this it is looking not responsive because uh, the horizontal uh, the vertical width is not in proportions but you get the point right now make another breakpoint and this will be uh, for much bigger devices just say minimum width uh, uh, maybe 2000 pixels and if the screen size is more than 2000 pixels just change the font size of html to 25 pixels so if i am refresh here you can see the website is looking very much responsive for this screen resolution now just make another breakpoint and that will be max width 1440 pixels so if the screen size is less than 1440 pixels but above or greater than 1200 pixels so what should be the font size we will do here so here just select the html and change the font size to 16 pixels so font size 14 16 pixels will be in the screen size between 1200 pixels to 1440 pixels just change these font size according to you uh, whatever you feel like and this is how the 4k uh, the website in 4k resolution look like which is in my case looking responsive to me and now our website is responsive for all screen sizes as you can see for the tablet for the mobile for the larger screen everything and we are technically pretty much done now we just have to add those little animations on scroll and we are done so to add animations we are going to use a library which called animate on scroll so search on that and click on this github pages link so this animate on scroll library lets you add animation as you can see when i scroll down i got this fade animation on these elements and you can add these sort of animations so just scroll down to the very bottom and you will see how we will going to use it so instead of a uh, yarn or npm we will going to use cdn so just copy this css cdn and go to index.page index html page and here let me add a comment aos cdn and let's paste the css cdn here and copy the javascript and at the bottom before this app.js file import this aos script and open the app.js file now if you see here it is saying initialize aos we have to call this aos.init so just call this aos.init because this is the library default that's how it works if you call if you don't call it the animation won't work now 
if you see how this fade up is working it is working using this data ios attribute so we need this data ios attribute for, uh, to uh, those element which we want to animate in this case we want to animate the image container of each section so let's animate the hero section first so for the image add here data aos and what sort of animation we want we want a zoom out animation so if i go back and refresh well you can see a zoom out animation now we want the animation for the links as well so in the anchor tag again add data aos and we want it to be zoom out as well so if i refresh you can see that the image and the social link are both getting animated but at the same time but i want a delay in that on the aos page if i search for delay you can see the way we add delay is by using data aos delay attribute so we will going to use that attribute to add delay in the animation so just add data aos delay and you can give time in in milliseconds and you can see there is a delay between the image and the anchor tag animation so just copy this data aos along with that delay attribute and paste it to the subscribers as well for the subscriber the animation will be going uh, will going to be the same but uh, the delay will be 300 millisecond instead of 450 do the same for hero review just change the delay value to 600 you can just play with the delay and uh, a different type of a uh, zoom uh, a different type of animation effect to create the animation so now let's work on this about section animation and this is easy as we did for hero section so this is our about us image container let's uh, add let's add the animation to this image first so add the data viewers along with the delay as well because uh, we going to add the animation for the linear gradient as well so just change the delay to 250 pixels for now and in this uh, about us image we will add the uh, animation which we will call first and then this delay animation will come now select the social links and again the animation will going to be the zoom out instead of zoom out the animation change it to zoom in up so the social link will be zoom in up and just change the delay values like this so if i refresh you can see the animation is happening when i scroll down you can see the animation now i'm going to animate this uh, linear gradient for that add a data aos here and you can type anything here this expand word i'm just typing it but uh, this expand uh, expand is not any sort of animation but why i'm doing it because i am going to use custom animation for that so if i select the image container and uh, uh, expand my inspector window let me just uh, go to the image container so you can see here whenever uh, I am scrolling and making the animation happening so whenever I am uh, scrolling down the animation uh, class is toggling you can see here AOS dash animate class is toggling here so by this class we can be assured that uh, yes this is the time to add the animation right so just search for about uh, us image container using the find tool and just go to the top like where it is and in the before so first of all just add about us image uh, container about us image actually and add aos animate state so whenever this about us image will have this aos animate class we will going to animate its before pseudo element so just we are going to change the values here so just say transform translate minus 50 percent the same to uh, make it in the center and just say scale y to one and by default we will set its scale to zero so whenever the animation expand gets called 
it will add the AOS animate class to this container and that will add the styles to the before pseudo element. As you can see, the animation is happening and that is the custom animation that we have created. Other than that, now we just are left with the uh, contact section and uh, it is pretty much same as the hero section and the about section. So let me just uh, paste that data iOS zoom out here and the animation name will be the same zoom out. Remove the delay because that will be the first animation and let me add the animation again in these anchor tags. Let me change the name zoom out from the to zoom in up and just change the delay value. And now you can see if I am scrolling, the animation is happening. So here we have this beautiful looking web page. I hope you learned something from this video and enjoyed watching. If you have any doubt, feel free to ask me in, in the comments. Just make sure you don't add any question in replies of any comment because I don't get replies notifications. Still, if you haven't liked this video, just do it now and subscribe the channel for more upcoming awesome projects, including ReactJS 1 too. If you want to connect with me, you can follow me on these platforms. We can have a nice chat there. So see you next time with some other project. Till then, keep learning. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hmm. Still want to learn? Click here to watch how to make 3D personal portfolio or here if you don't know how to create an e-commerce website with payment integration.